up guys how you doing my name is Mel welcome to Holmes Law just gonna show you a little bit of the uh, switch gear room okay and I'm uh, gonna tell you a little bit about the components for each you know service all right and um, <clears throat> basically in this room we have about six services all right and um, not all of them have uh, the power company has given us our power yet for all of them. We have power to two of our services, which are feeding the rest of the services temporarily as well. Okay, so let's go over some of the sections here that you'll probably see in a switch gear room, okay? So from this section here all the way to the midpoint till about here, okay, is one set that's one service one whole service right there now this middle transition here that you're seeing is something that was customized for us so that we can temporarily feed our other service until our power company was able to get permanent power for all our other services okay now what you see here is a bolt switch. So yeah, this is a bolt switch, okay? So basically, this is what we call a bolt pressure switch, all right? This switch is what's actually gonna isolate or turn off a section of the service, okay? And in our case, this switch here is going to turn off this section here. Okay, which are two other switches. So that bolt switch will turn off these two or turn them on, okay? Now these switches here, okay, are basically, they're, they're turned on a little differently, all right? What you'll have to do is charge them first and how you'll do that is with this lever. You'll have to pull it down. This one here, you have to do it about three times, okay? Three or four times, I'm not really sure, I can't remember. After that, it'll say charged, okay? It'll say charged here, and then you can actually press the push button, and it'll turn on the breaker, okay? Now, to turn it off, all you really have to do is just push that, that off button, and that's it, okay? There's another way of doing it, too, as well, with this little key ring here. You can actually pull it, and it'll trip it as well. Now, what's good about this is that if you pull this out, you can actually place a lock and you'll be able to, you know, tag it out, lock it out and tag it out. Okay. So that's how you actually work these type of breakers. All right. You would have to first charge it by pushing down, pulling down the lever quite of three or four times. Uh, some brands might be different. And then you'll have to actually push the, the on button and that'll turn it on. All right, or it'll close the circuit. All right, now this is another bolt switch, okay, which is actually going to isolate these two bucket switches, okay? Now, that will control this section. It'll turn it off or turn it on, and that's basically one whole service, okay? Now, these switches control other branch circuits down the line okay so this is where it all starts from here and it'll feed other loads or other panels that'll feed other branch circuits and so on okay so this one here is actually on already as you can see and yeah so it's feeding this whole service all right this part of the of the service here is called the CT cabinet, okay? Our power company is called Con Edison in New York City. And this is our CT cabinet, which holds the CTs. We don't have them here yet, okay? But they'll be installed. If you see these vertical bars, that's where the actual CTs go. They get installed in there, which this meter wire gets hooked up to them, and it'll give the meter its reading. Okay, so this is where the CT cabinet is. This is where the CTs go. All right, our main conductors, okay, our service center conductors are going to be connected right above the CT cabinet. There'll be some provisions there, lugs, and we'll be able to terminate our main feeds there. Okay, 
Now, from there is where all the electricity gets dispersed and it goes throughout the bolt switches, through bus bars and whatnot to feed the rest of this service, okay? Now, <clears throat> right underneath the CT cabinet, um, you'll have, on some services, you'll have some provisions. What I mean is some lugs to terminate either your fire pump directly to it or maybe a fire alarm system connected right to it directly, okay? So fire pumps have to get connected directly because of Article 695. If you read that, I'm not gonna get into it here, but yes, so it gets connected directly to the service, but it has to get connected after the CT cabinet. This way, it can actually get metered, all right? So that's just something you should know. And then from, as I said, from this middle transition here is another service, okay? Now, we have something customized here where we connected the two services through bus bars, so like I said, it could temporarily feed another service. So these are two services <clears throat> separately, but to, for right now, we're feeding them through one, all right? And same thing over here, same setup. It's actually quite simple, okay? Bolt switch, all right, feeds these, this section here, and that's basically, actually this bolt switch here is gonna feed this whole section here. So it's gonna feed these two switches as well as these bucket switches as well. Okay, and as you can see, our power company has already came here and given us power to this service and it's already locked out. Our meter is hooked up as well. And this big boy here is our fire pump, okay? Disconnect, which from the CT cabinet, under the CT cabinet, okay, we came with our feeds over to the actual disconnect, and from the disconnect, we go to the actual fire pump, all right? And in this service is where the fire alarm uh, feeds are getting tied into the service. Right under this CT cabinet over here is where the fire alarm is actually getting tied into directly to the service. Same setup over here, we have two services put together temporarily until they get fed from the power company. The thing is, is that the power company is gonna need some time to dig underground and get their conductors in, so it's gonna take quite a while, so we'll have to come back and actually, you know, finish it off when, they're actually, when our power company gets done. All right, so this bolt switch here feeds that section from here down. Same thing here, we have a, a, a transition, the, these bars that are actually temporarily feeding the rest of the service until, like I said, the power company gets us power to individual services, okay? <clears throat> show you that. Now, show you a couple of uh, the 750 KVA transformers. We have quite a few of them in here. So if you see here, we have 750 KVA transformers, okay, and yeah, basically all done through wireways. You have these uh, bolt switch disconnects here, all right, we have some actual bus stuff going throughout the building. So. Yeah, some of these switches, okay, come out into disconnects that go and feed other rises throughout the building as well. <clears throat> Basically, this is the back of your meter, okay, and uh, these wires over here are coming from the actual bus, okay? This is just to get the voltage side of you know, your switch gear. These are, are coming from the CTs, okay? They have CTs that are wrapped around the bus so they can read the actual amperage that is getting pulled, okay? This is behind the meter, okay? So these over here, as you see, the I symbol, which is for amps, these are coming from your CTs, okay? So that I can actually read the amperages that are going through your switch gear, okay? So these are coming from the CTs that are wrapped around the actual bus bars. 
on your on your switch gear. Okay. Now this other side over here is is basically good, are the wires that are going to be reading the voltage. That'll be coming from your buses as well. All right. Before it gets to the meter, they're going through an actual breaker. Okay, which you'll have to turn on to get it functioning. Okay. And basically, the most important part is this shorting bar right here. What you basically have to do to get it up and running, get your CTs up and running, is take off the actual screws that are on the phases, okay, on the positive side, okay? Now, the white is the, is the negative side, so you don't need to take those screws out, okay? Those you want to actually leave on, because what it's going to do is this bar is acting like a jumper. So when you take off the screws that are actually, you know, combining the, the positive to the negative, <clears throat> once you take those out, then it'll, you can leave the, the bar on because it'll just be the jumper in between the neutrals and then it'll be grounded out, okay? It also has to be grounded, all right? So, basically, if you see here, I'm just taking off all of the screws that are going onto my positive side of my CTs, which is the black, the purple, and the red. Okay, so those three screws are actually thumb screws that you can take off, you know, with your fingers. Most of the time, some brands, they'll, they'll put those thumb screws there, but sometimes they won't. Okay, so I want to let you know that you just need to take off the ones that are actually going to the positive side of your CT. Okay, so after you take those off, you know, you could still leave the bar on because it's going to be uh, jumping the neutrals together and it'll ground it out. Okay, so that's what you have to do to get this up and running. You'll turn on the breaker, you'll take off the screws from the from the, the shorting bar so that it's not shorted out anymore to your phases, and that's pretty much it. That's how you'll get this meter up and running again, you know, up and running. And after you're done, voila, it'll be it's on. That's it. Okay, it's reading your voltage, and then you can go through the screen and you could set it up however you want as well. Okay, and uh, basically I'm not going to get into the settings, but that's basically how you get this meter up and running. And I'm pretty sure other brands are similar as far as what the, when the CTs go. Mostly all the CTs, they're going to come uh, sorted out with that sorting bar, like I showed you. <clears throat> These are two other services. Okay, this is the back of the services. All right, which let me show you the front of it. This is the front of the last two services. So that's one, and this one here is another. Now on these, we don't have that middle transition that's feeding it, you know, temporarily. So these two are not live at the moment. <clears throat> these two can get held off. We have enough services that are being, that are live enough to feed the building temporarily until we get the power company to give every service their power individually. <clears throat> so that's that. And pretty much you have the same setup here. Bolt switch that controls half of the uh, service and then you have another bolt switch that controls the other half of the service. It's pretty much it. And same thing over here. See how it's it's off right now. It has green. It says discharge. In order to charge it, you would have to pull this down three times, push the on button, and it'll click on. Okay? It'll say charge. When it's ready to, for you to pull it, you'll see it because this will switch to charged. And in this breaker, it'll, it'll turn yellow. <clears throat> yep. So that's pretty much it for that. Okay. It's just something that I want to show you for testing purposes or whatever, but I do want you to be careful. You never want to do this if you don't have to do this or if you're not qualified or experienced, okay? But... If you ever need to open these, these are, you know, to test it or for whatnot, there are always ways that you can do it. Right now, this is off, so you can't open the door, okay? But if this were to be on, it would not let me open this door, okay? So <clears throat> for this one here, if you look under here, you can stick 
a flathead in there and actually push that to the side and it'll let you open it while the actual bucket's in the on position, okay? And there's always different different uh, switches that'll have it, you know, a little bit differently. But if you look on the back of the door, it'll give you the information that you need to actually open these switches while they're in the on position, okay? So let's look at a different one. This one here is a little bit different. Okay, right now it's in the off position, but if it were to be in the on position, <clears throat> if you see this little slot here and you stick your flathead in and you push it to the right, it'll let you open it while it's in the on position. Now, if you look up here, it'll give you all the directions that you need to know that. So it's good to look, you know, and, and just if you work with a new brand, and you have some new equipment, just take a look at it in the back of the jaw just to see how it is that you need to open it, just in case you ever need to do that, okay? Right, so it's good to know that, all right? And it'll actually, if you look inside here, it'll push this lever, and it'll let you actually, you know, move it. You see that? Yeah. <clears throat> so, that's basically all I have here for that. Let's take a look at this semen switch. Usually, on the side here, you'll be able to stick a flathead in and turn it, and that will let you open this while it's in the on position, okay? Instead of flathead there, or grab a channel locks and just turn it up and it'll actually let you open it. Most disconnects will let you do that. There's always a way to open it in the arm position. Okay, this one's a little bigger, same thing. This is a Siemens. So all the Siemens has that on the side. Okay, <clears throat> you just want to be careful if you ever are doing that. Okay. Same thing here, this is a 400 amp, same thing, you stick it to the side and it'll let you open it. Okay, you just want to be careful if you ever are going to do that. This is a bigger disconnect, <clears throat> okay, and this one here is a little different. It has the same kind of uh, uh, switch, but it doesn't have it on the side here. What you'll have to do is you'll have to stick it up here and either push it up or down and it'll let you open the door while it's in the on position as well. And they'll always give you the information that you need on the back side of the door. So before you actually liven it up, you want to take a look at that and just so you can familiarize yourself with that as well. All right, guys, my name is Mel. <clears throat> This is Holmes Law, but before I do go, please let me know if there's any other content and anything else that you want me to show you in Switch Gear Rooms, and you want me to explain to you, and I will.